Hello my beautiful people, my viewers, welcome to Movie Manual. This is your girl Aggie and today it's a different setting. Usually you see me in the gardens with trees and leaves and flowers. But today I am in the Rest TV studios and I am blessed and honored. I have the beautiful Kenisha Mars. She is a writer, director, producer and an actor. She's also the CEO Glorious Films. Motion pictures. <laughs> Motion pictures. Mm -hmm. She's also a member of the Women Foundation of Uganda. She's actually not just a member, but she is the president. Help me welcome Kenisha to the show. Welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Aggie. I'm very honored to be on, you know, uh, Rest TV. It's such a great honor. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Mm. Thank you for allowing to be here because I know how you guys are busy. This is the season that you guys are running around here and there. Mm. How come you made it possible for us to be with you today? Actually, I love cameras. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had to make it a point to be here. <laughs> nice. It's yeah. good to have you. Mm. Thank you so much. So, um, these people don't know you. Me, I know you. I know who Kenisha is, but mm. who is Kenisha and how long have you been in the industry? Um, Kenisha is an actress, she's a writer, she's a director, and she's a filmmaker. I've been in this industry since 2016, that's when I joined, yeah. Okay, mm. and uh, when did you realize you're actually passionate about filmmaking? Was it, did you just wake up one morning and you're like, I think I love filmmaking? Did you actually study filmmaking, acting, or, you know, whatever you do? Mm. What happened? Did you just wake up one morning and you're like, this is it, I want to do this? Or when, how did you realize, how did you feel? When did you find out that? Um, actually, I got to realize that I can actually act. That was way back in primary school. Yes, you see, our primary school had this program called the Roots and Shoots. We had to give back to the nature. So it had this dance and drama part. So I was actually very um, lucky to be cast, like to do the drama part and actually pulled it off. Hmm. That's when I realized that actually I could be a good actor. And from then, I've been like trying, you know, watching movies, trying, you know, to imitate those people and you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Mm -hmm. So from the look of things, you actually joined the industry quite young. Mm -hmm. how, how has it been? What challenges have you faced you as you since you joined it so early? Well, the challenges I really faced, uh, by the time I really joined, uh, I found out that the, most of the producers here in Uganda, like they have their own people and they can't actually just allow someone from where like wherever you're coming to just join you know their team so they had their members and that was really bad because we're not given a chance like i personally i wasn't given that chance mm. like i really wanted yes i remember one time uh there were auditions at the national theater and because i really love to act so much i went and when i went there i found you know people, the auditioning team and everyone there and I, I was like, I've come here to audition and there's a guy, he just looked at me and he said, um, I'm so sorry but you can't do this. Why? I don't know. He, just like that? Just like that. He didn't even give me a chance to try out. Believe me, I was so hurt. I moved out of the National Theatre. Uh, that garden and I went out and the border border was even about to knock me down because I was so confused I was like I wish they really gave me that chance like to show them that I actually yeah, can. You see, every time I really remember that scenario I'm like oh my god like do really girls go through this even like, was even yes was. and from that time I was like what can I do what can I really do I tried I I was patient I try to, you know, work on my monologues and be home uh, looking for work. But then I was getting the same story everywhere I went. I don't know, because I was young or because I didn't, you know, I was not plating hair, you know, the vacation thing. Mm. And I don't know, but it really hurts. And I still remember that scenario. It was so hard. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. But how did you break through then? Well like i said if you're really passionate about something and if you really love something you do all it takes so i never sat i remember uh i was there at national theater like i used to go there and just sit 
and say, okay, if they can't give me, you know, to audition, let me sit. Maybe someone could see me. Mm. And they say, oh, uh, you come. So I was there. There's a, a lady called Alia Nafka. Mm. Actually, that lady, you know, did a lot, yeah, in my, you know, acting thing. Because she found me there and she was like, hi, can you do theatre? I was like, yes, no problem. She said, oh, Katolu Wama wants, um, you know, girls because we don't have young girls. So can you do it? I say, yeah, it's really a pleasure. So I went there. I started doing, so I left film. Mm. Because yes, I went mm. there and I started doing that uh, theatre thing. And since there were no girls, so I was the one doing all the girlish thing. Yes. Nice. Mm. So did you like get support from your parents since you joined way too early and uh, uh, you could hardly make decisions by yourself. So who helped you like settle in? Did you get support from your parents? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. No one really supported, you know, that. And they actually never knew that I could act. <laughs> they never knew. Actually, my mom knew I could dance because I love music a lot, like so much. But she never you know, knew. You know, it's I one thing to love and then it's mm. the other to do, actually. Do you actually know how to dance? Do you <laughs> think you can dance? <laughs> I used to dance. I used to dance, but then <sighs> time has gone. I don't think I can do that anymore, but I used to be a good dancer. So you did not get any support and you just went on and did what you had to do and you like kept yes. going and kept Yes, going. I just looked for opportunities like if, if you know, during my vacation i was like where can i now get this team mm. the acting and things so i went i looked for people mm. yes okay you have earned a couple of nominations in different categories from different festivals how has that experience been well that's for starters good. what have you actually done well before that's we even talk about the festivals and you know the, the nominations what have you done oh uh, like uh, the film way mm -hmm. thing okay i've uh, in 2018, I produced a film, it's called The Right Path, mm. and it actually got nominated in the Uganda Film Festival. Mm, that nice. was a plus, mm. and it was really um, awesome. And I also did another short film, it's called Polyentileno. Yes. What is Polyentileno? Actually, is that French <laughs> or German? Yes, it's or? French. It's French. Uh, Polyentileno means a polythene. Actually, so I just wanted to twist it a little bit. So you just woke up home and you're like, I'm going to write about polyethylene. No. <laughs> Actually, there is a story behind because uh, we see an orphan and she lost her parents. Like, she lost both of her parents. And there's this thing she was walking around with is a polythene which had her mother's dress inside. That's why I named it poly, poly, polyethylene. Yeah, from polythene. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, so did uh, what? Did, how did polyethylene do? Oh my on both god! On, uh, both on this level, like on a national, and international level. Polyethylene and the right path. Oh my god, those two babies! I love them so much. You know, they are my babies. Actually, I'm not a parent. I'm not a mother <laughs> yet. But those are my babies. They have really done a lot. Believe me, I've been nominated like worldwide, and every nomination has come with a selection. I don't know. Uh, an invite, an invitation to go and attend the festival. Yes. Nice. So I was supposed to attend, but actually this COVID thing came in. Nice. So that's why I didn't. So uh, we, do you do you know which fe festivals exactly that uh, Polyant Leno was actually selected? Ah, uh, yeah, there have been so many. I don't think even I can remember them because there are so many. Are they many. are they like like? Okay. Anyway, let me not just <laughs> <laughs> let me not stress you so much. Very many. Maybe. Okay, as a writer, tell us the process. Mm. As in, do you wake up one morning and you're like, I'm going to write a script and it's going to be about this and that. What do you do exactly? Do you, do you, like, are you walking on the street and you look at something and you're like, actually, I think I can write about this. Or is, do you always write about your experiences or experiences of people that you know? So tell us about the process. How do you go about writing? Uh, actually, where I get my stories uh, is by, you know, listening to people's stories. Okay. And yes, that's why I love making friends. Every time I talk to someone, I get something to write about. Yes, so when they are talking, I always do listen. Yes, so uh, when I'm listening, uh, somewhere, somehow, they pitch something for me. 
yes to write about so i create something nice. out of their stories nice so what in inspires you to write as in what are your movies always about? Are they about like anything and everything? Or are you like looking at, for example, GBV, gender-based gender violence, mm. or, you know, un underprivileged people, mm. or children, or whatever? What do you always, what inspires you to write? Oh, what is really inspires me to write? Mm. Actually, when I watch movies, I get inspired. Oh. Mm -hmm. And my movies are always, like inspirational like i love to write about you know uh showing uh this day-to-day -day life yes so i write something and i mm. make sure that people learn something out of it nice yes. uh so like because when we're starting i actually said you're going mostly mm. focus on your acting career yeah. but we i know we've talked about your writing and your producing and all that mm. so back to your acting as a as a, an actress mm. you've done a couple of roles i know for sure yeah. which one has been so rewarding but challenging at the same time and then you feel like this this role was really challenging but i thank god that i actually took it up uh, actually i think uh it was you know uh from my film the right path you acted in your film yes i was there i've been appreciating that i really pulled it off as a mother <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah so um you are you are a very, very beautiful woman. Mm. And as a beautiful woman in the industry that is ever growing, what have been the challenges? Because I know there are those common general challenges that everyone faces, like, 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 uh, like rejection. Yeah. But then there are those that people like you yeah. face. So what are some of those challenges that you have faced as a young, beautiful woman in the industry? Actually, I think my major problem, like the challenges I've faced, I think I have one that I really have an issue with. This is being an actress, yet I'm also a producer. So most of the producers out there in my country don't want actually to cast me because I'm a producer. And when I asked one guy that actually, uh, he's my friend, so I was like, is it okay if I come and also, you know, future or audition in you, uh, some of your movies? He was like, no. And I was like, why? why? He said, I can't really give you a cast because you're a producer now. And you also have your own, you know, movies. And I was, that is harsh in my heart. You know, because for him, he's a writer and he's a producer. So if I'm, you know, an actress, that means I'll leave the production part, uh, the production in me, and I'll be on your set as a, an actress. So I was hurt, and that still hurt me really so much. <laughs> that's why when I'm, I'm with, uh, you know, those producers and I work, think that's work, why at the end of the I day you have to be writing your own stories whereby you'll be <laughs> acting. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. that's what I'm going to do. If they really can't see me as an actress and they see the production part in me, then... What can I do? What other challenges? For real, for real. Other challenges? Um, I haven't faced uh, that. Other than many. the rejection bit of it, whereby you are rejected at the National Theatre. Mm. What other challenges? Because they know they're there. Like, okay, like people asking you, uh, like no. for example, someone says, if you want me to give you a role, um, then you have to do A, B, C, D. You know why I really haven't come across uh, those challenges? Because these people actually, before they were not giving me roles. And when I made my film, they started to see me. So they mm. say, ah, oh, so this is Kenisha. That's when they saw me. But they saw me as a different person. And there's no way they could actually make me do that. Yeah, when I still am, I'm like in this picture. Yes. Ah. But I know there are girls out there who are really facing, you know, a lot of issues. Issues like? Ah, uh, what? Issues like, you know, a director would say, um, you want a role? Okay, it's fine. So could you do this and do that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's really, 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 really like serious on, more, on a serious note, like it's affecting very the bad industry. And, and it's very bad, you know, if, if uh, like, I wish I could really talk to those girls because this um, uh, producer was giving you a role. There's there's another girl who is going to come in and you'll be rubbish. So will you keep doing that? It's really not good. It's not, mm. it's not worth it. Just believe, because you know, there's always that uh, right time. So if it, 
is asking you for this, just don't do it. Just go and you know look for you know a role somewhere else. Yeah, because because uh, uh, let's say I'm that girl, mm. and I I really really want a role. I want to shine. I feel I am burning inside with all this talent. But then, in what me. guarantee do you have that after using you, he he won't drop you? I don't know. I am just trying to do whatever I have to do to make sure that I get this role. Then That's that the whole is point. Wrong. That is wrong. So I, now I, I was actually saving this question for later, but now that we've actually talked about it, how mm. would you advise a young girl out there mm. that is so passionate, they feel they have what it takes to act, but they have not been given a chance, and the only chance probably they've been given mm. is for them to do something uh, before they, they actually they, they actually shouldn't do that i believe that there is always that right time for everything like when i joined the industry that was in 2016 i was so young i, I sat and i really sat and i was not getting you know what i really wanted in the industry but then i was patient and i knew that there could be that time for me you know so there's always that time for everything so they shouldn't do you know that rush rush thing because they want a cast he may use you and you know dump you and okay if he doesn't and he gives you the role and then the next cast and he doesn't cast you so what are you going to do no, but, but even if that? he did let's say he actually gave me a role in mm. his film so mm. tomorrow i'm having i have to go to another production house do i still have to do the same thing no see that is where i'm saying that is why i'm saying that it's really wrong to mm. do that yeah, that we shouldn't really do that. We should just, as an actor, just make yourself ready. Do, do on your mono, do your monologues, uh, work on your craft. Yes, just keep rehearsing, go for auditions, and be patient. One day, one time. Yeah, be patient. There's always that, you know, right time. Okay, so uh, as a member of International Foundation of Women. Mm. You are actually the president yeah. Uganda. Mm. What is that about? Uh, actually, I would want to thank uh, Mr. Hector, all the way from India, uh, for making me the, uh, the, the president of Uganda for the Women International Foundation. Yes, actually this uh, foundation is all about uh, lifting and empowering women, international and national. So what exactly, do you have an office here? Do you, what is it about exactly? Have Our main branch is in India, but uh, as a president here in Uganda, I, I always move around like helping women uh, facing this uh, domestic violence. So I talk to them, I actually encourage them. I talk to them like, like tell them, you know, the right places to go for help. Mm. And yes, and to also, you know, encourage them that they're worth a lot more than you know being treated you know that way oh yeah nice so mm -hmm. so you go you go visiting all these uh... yes basically i go in villages mostly because yeah wow that's mm -hmm. nice yeah that's a very very good Thank thing you. coming from you thank you <laughs> coming from someone like you it means a lot really thank you so um Ugandans are known to be entrepreneurial, mm. as in, I don't know if it's because this industry is not paying well enough for us to actually focus on one thing mm. that is filmmaking, but mm. you find someone, like for example, my friend Kenisha is mm. actually mm. Uh, a farmer. Mm. My friend Kenisha is actually a businesswoman somewhere. Yeah. So uh, other than you being an actress, a writer, as in a filmmaker generally, mm. what's that other thing you do, like your side hustle? Oh, okay. Um, I have a shop, uh, yes. And so you are a businesswoman? Yes, I have a shop, a boutique. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in the boutique? Because this is your chance. You could oh, actually, I you could <laughs> actually, you know, we won't pay you for, okay. we won't ask you to pay for that. Uh, yeah, so. I have a collection of ladies and gents and children's wear. Hi. Yeah, and it's located at uh, Makindye, that is DK Plaza. Second floor, B32, you're all <laughs> welcome. Nice. So you see, you'll have to pay at the end of the day. Akarango, Jack Casa So, um, like I said earlier, I was asking you how you would advise mm. a young 
your okay your young self for example mm. some of those things that you didn't do right mm. that you'd like you would think if i was to be given another chance mm. to go back to being okay to 2016 mm. let's go just go back to when you actually got into the industry mm. what would i do right that i probably have done wrong all this time what are those things that you think you could have done better but because of pressure because of impatience mm. you 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 probably did not do them right but you think that if i was to be given a chance mm. i would do better so how would you advise your younger self my young self i mm, actually i think i think i've really managed to pull out everything <laughs> like <laughs> Like I'm not seeing anything that I'm regretting. No. Okay. No. But still, there's, mm. there's 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 a young person out there. She's probably doing music, dance, and drama, or um. she's studying film at mm. K Kampala Film School, or something. But she wants to get in. How would you advise her? What should what should be those key things that should put in mind before she actually gets into the industry? Okay. So this industry, like like this industry of Uganda. Um, how I really, really want to advise you if you're out there watching, uh, if you're coming in this industry because of money, <laughs> well, my friend, you'll be very disappointed. You have to be, first of all, very patient. You have to know what you want. Yes. And then uh, these roles are, are not going to come in every day. So if you're not very patient, you might say, oh, let me go and do something else. And if you really leave, you won't find the industry like how you've left it. Mm. Yes, someone else is going to really replace you because some people are there actually and you won't get that same chance. So you just have to be persistent and know what you want. Yes, and work on your skills. Put your packages all together. That When that right time comes, believe me, you won't even know. It's easier said than done because mm. now you're on this side. Okay. You don't know what it means to be out there wanting to do, especially, you know, like, for example, this kind of thing that we do. Mm. Our, most of our parents or guardians or the people that actually have raised us mm. don't believe in it. Mm. So uh, you would find that people don't believe in this. Uh, the so, thing. Yeah, so it's easier said, but what is that one thing that you'd say? persistent discipline mm. i don't know all those things that you'd say mm. no mm. go to use your airtime, time buy data mm. watch those youtube videos mm. better yourself at mm. different things so mm. yeah i i'd want you to emphasize that bit of what one should do while waiting while, for that right okay, opportunity while waiting Hmm. First of all, like you said, discipline is the key wherever you go. If you're not disciplined, believe me, you won't make it in this industry. And another thing, work on your skills. You might sit for like three years, but work on your skills every day. Practice those monologues. You never know when that right time like, is going to, you know, yeah. So uh, what do you think uh, we would do as a, in an industry generally? Mm to get to, to that level because honestly speaking without like even pretending mm. we know that we are not on the level of Kenya yet mm. or Nigeria or so what would you think would uh, as an industry we would do mm. to, to earn a place on an international okay. level like be recognized and then you do a film mm. and then everyone is like oh my god mm. Yuga hood or whatever <laughs> I don't know what we even call the Ugandan film industry, yeah. as in have that place and like how we know Nollywood and mm. you know Bollywood. That is really very simple. Just do good work. What do you mean exactly? Well, I just produce good content. If you're an actor or an actress, just give it your best. I am doing my best, but mm -hmm. are you doing your best as the producer, yes. for example? Yes, <laughs> me personally, I'm doing my best. Like, all actors and actresses that have really worked with me know what I'm really doing. If I make a project, I make sure I push my project. I yeah, push but, it because but, but, I but know Kenisha, it's really wait. Mm. There's making a project, mm. and there's also pushing it, but then there's also making it to the standard. Mm. Because at the end of the day, people keep on saying, mm. to resources. Okay. As in low budget, low budget. So they end up mm -hmm. 
doing things that are substandard. Mm. You understand what I mean, right? Mm. As in, instead of you hiring Kenisha because she's the right person for the role, mm. but because you think Kenisha is going to ask for way too much money, yeah. and then you're going to settle with someone who is who's, who's ready to take 100K. Mm. But Kenisha was, I was telling you, man, the per day, mm. we know kumpe mituala sato, or $100, just mm. roughly. And then this person is like, ah, hundred dollars. So we're going to move on to cast you on now. Once again, and Amadi Zanga, he's just settling for someone just mm. because mm. they don't want to actually pay for the right person. Okay, then we're going to move on film you jail a bit because actually people want good content. We're going to move on to jail a bit film you. Hmm. Yes, because people want good content, and if you make good content, believe me, this content is going to move. It's going to travel places you've never even been. Yes. So you advise? Okay, what would you you advise to the directors and film, other filmmakers? Well, to the actors, yes, to the talent, to the talent, to the talent, the other side of me, the production stuff. You mm. know, advising as a producer. Uh, you just, you could actually make a low budget film that is really good. Yes. You could have a low budget film that is really good. Believe me. So they just need to, you know, use their resources very well. Yes. Okay, we are going to go for a short break. When we come back, we're still going to be having Kenisha. She's going to tell us more about what she has done as an actress and what has gotten her to this level. Is it discipline? Is it her looks? Is it, is it her output? Can she actually act? Is it why she has gotten to this level? We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere and stay tuned. Welcome back from that short break. We are still here with Kenisha and uh, we are still actually talking to her. She's going to tell us more. Now, right now, exactly, mm -hmm. I want you to tell us, who do you look up to? Who are those people that you look up to and you're like, I want to be like Aggie when I grow up. <laughs> oh, so yeah. in national, uh, there's this girl. She's called Nisha Kalema. I really love what you do and what you add, you know, to this industry. I really look up to you. That's nice. <laughs> and I love her work too. Really? Mm -hmm. And international, I have this lady. She's called Taraj. Wow. Yeah, I really I know. love cool that key. woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in her, this empire, like this series, it's called The Empire. Oh my God. <sighs> if I could only wake up like Taraj. Oh wow. No. <laughs> that's 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 big. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah. Any other person? A man? Perhaps? A man. Chris Evans. Who's Chris Evans? Uh Chris Evans is a he's an actor in Hollywood. Is he Chris Evans or Chris Rock? Mm -mm, Chris Evans. Oh what does he do? He's an actor. Really? Mm -hmm. Is he white? Is he black? Is he Oh Caucasian? he's white. He's white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know any of his movies? Just asking for, 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 for me to go and look up to him because I also want to find out what makes you. Uh, yes, I know there's this movie called uh, The Garage. Oh, yes. Is it The Garage? Yeah. Is it a series? Just a movie? No, it's a feature. It's a movie. Oh. Mm. Okay, any other person? Mm, and another person could be in Ghana. Yes, she's called Nadia Buari. I've watched that woman. Mm, since I was young and I've loved all all the, the films she has featured in. She has really, you know, pulled it off. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I am going to ask you 
what your favorite movies are. It doesn't matter, it can be Ugandan, it can be someone from Kenya, like some movie that probably you got to know about, but it's from mm. Kenya, or Nigerian, or Indian. an Indian, because mm. since you're working with Indians, I'm sure you now you follow a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what are your five favorite movies of all time? Okay. Something okay. that you said, before I go to bed, I can watch it twice. In a week, I can watch it three times. Okay. Number five. Five, it's a series that is Empire. Four. And four. There's this movie I I always watch, like I've watched it from when I was young. Mm. It's called, you know, um, what's Cinderella Story. Mm -hmm. I love that movie <laughs> with all my heart. Okay. Cinderella Story. And then there's this Veronica's Wish. Okay, Kalena. From here, yeah. yes. And Number four. There is uh, my film, it's called The Right Path. And then my other film is called Polly and Tileno. Are you just being... Uh... No, I know. I just <laughs> love what I really did. Nice. That's mm -hmm. good. So, uh, Kenisha, what are you working on right now? Uh, as a producer, I'm working on a feature. It's called My Husband's Mistress. And another short is called What is Life. And as an actress, I'm working on a, a, a TV series. It's called, uh, it has that local name that I'm trying to forget. And then I'm also working with one of uh, Uganda's uh, biggest producers. He's called Hassan Mageye. He has a, a series. It's called Roho Kwa Roho. Roho Kwa Roho. Yes, and I'm cast. What is, what, what is that? That's Swahili, right? Yeah, that is Swahili. Meaning? No. <laughs> heart for heart. Really? You see? Oh, I... Oh, yes, I remember asking him and then I forgot. Didn't, don't, don't, I think there must be, I think, I, mm. God help me, but I think I saw yes. a sign of a heart in a heart. Ah. So I was like, Roho Kwa Roho, and I'm like, I actually asked Ka 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 Kamau and he was like, oh, it's, 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 it's heart for heart. Ah, really? Yeah, something like that. Yes, and this other future, it's called um, Tinker. Yes, so those are the current projects that I'm working on. You um, are a busy woman. Yeah, I'm actually busy. Nice. Mm. So uh, when you're not acting, mm. you're not at your boutique, mm. you're not producing or writing or anything, what do you do for fun? What are those things that you're like, oh my God, it's a weekend. I am not going to do any acting, any business or anything. Um, I'm actually going to do this. What's that one mm. thing or two things that you do? Okay, I, I love music. Do you I love like music. listening like dancing? yes listening like you know if I just stay home and lock myself in my room and I just listen to music I dance and then when I'm tired when I'm all tired I watch movies I get a bucket of popcorns and <laughs> I watch movies till morning oh, yes. oh okay so uh, now I'm going to go back to that, that like now back as a producer mm. because i know you guys as producers forget about now the talent an okay. actor actresses and all okay. that okay. the producers mm. in this industry mm. what challenges have you faced uh, who finances your movies for example because i do I, finance my projects okay like i personally yes like i told you i love what i do I remember the first project I had to sell my iPhone and the laptop <laughs> and I added, you know, I made my first project. And the problems actually I've faced, um, mm, actually as a producer, mm, like, I don't know much about the industry so everyone like I tried, you know, to connect with or like, oh, she's she's young. Does she even know what she's doing? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. That was really putting me down. And sometimes I could want someone on set and because, you know, they're known in the industry and like an actor or an actress because they are known in the industry and I really fail. Like I look for ways to try to talk to them because, you know, like because I can as a writer I can read I can read people and when when I see that person sitting there I'm like now what am I going to say to her I think she's looking at me and she's like so who is going to do this do you do you even know what you're doing I remember sometime there's a guy on my set he was like I called him and I told him 
Ah, uh, you're late for today's shoot. I was like, you didn't wake me up. For you don't even know what you're doing. What are you even doing? You don't even know what you're doing. Leave these things for people who know what they are doing. Are you, is, is, is that because you're, you're soft spoken? I or think is it because, because you're a woman? I think it's both. No, no, no. Because I'm a girl or a woman. I think that is the major thing. Because if it was a man, you, you can't tell me that you didn't call me to wake me up. That is why I... So I'm what do you do in such cases, in such instances? Someone, someone you're going to pay, he's supposed mm. to deliver, but he comes on set late, and I then he tells you, you did not wake me I swear I fire you. No, no, no. Because the problem is, I wish I just know this when, when I'm casting them. You, you can never know. I can never know. That is why I really feel bad. Because this um, person, you know, one day they told me that, you know what, it is, it is midday, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave. Remember, I have to pay for the equipment. I have to pay for you. So it's midday and they tell me, ah, I'm leaving. I'm sorry, I'm leaving. And I just so what did back. So what did you do? I sat back. I cried. <laughs> I, I thought that was what happened exactly. I cried. I, I really cried and actors tried, you know, like talking like, you know, talking to him like, you can't do this to her because she paid the equipment. She's going to, actually I'd paid him before even we start filming because... Then you don't do that mistake again. Yeah, that is the mistake I did because I always pay just to, you know, make sure everything is sorted. So I pay them, then I'm like, okay, that is enough for today. Like, so that has is, that taught you in this one, what's Yes, it? a lot. Then I don't, ex you know, I don't think I'll ever work with, you know, that person again because don't I Don't cry learned. again now, can you say? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's as if you're going to cry again. Please don't. Huh? <laughs> we are in our oh, happy okay. times here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, your heart's so bad that you feel like you want yeah, to cry again. I was, I'm okay, I'm okay. Nice. Wow. <sighs> it's all good, but I understand what you're going through because I know how hard one goes to make this money. Yeah. Because in the first place, the movie, like you said, mm. There's no money coming in. We don't have any funding coming in. Mm -hmm. So it is you, you're going to have to sell your watch, you have to sell your shoe, you have to sell, like for you to be able to do this. Yeah. But then when someone treats you like that at the end of the day, honestly, you guys, actor, but talent, do the right thing, be disciplined, respect people's time and money. It is very important. Because you see, it's so funny. Mm. When when you call, if, let's say you call me mm. on your set and I start, you know, you know, acting like I'm a diva, like I'm a brand, like I can't work under these conditions, it is always good for you to explain to me, mm. tell me, Agi, this is what is going to happen. I'm going to pay you this much, mm. but we won't have lunch like a buffet. We are going to have to settle for. Uh, you know, a Rolex or mm. a cup of tea and a chapati. Uh, you know, like. In, you like inform like prepare me mm. so that when i come to the set i don't act like i had no idea mm. me what actually pisses me off mostly is the fact that mm. you promise me things here mm. when you're casting me and telling me you're going to pay me this much you're going to you're going to provide lunch and transport now we have a problem of the curfew mm. and then you know that when it gets past curfew time mm. It is hard for me to use the same amount of money I would have used before curfew. Mm -hmm. But then you don't want to look at that as the producer. You start acting as if you're helping me. Mm -hmm. Yet the arrangement or the agreement was we're supposed to agree to work together. Mm -hmm. But then my point here is I think it, it's always good to sit and talk yeah. before you do anything. And now you even have a problem that you pay people before they even deliver. That's <laughs> even worse because I would start acting up. I would even tell you I don't like the cameraman <laughs> as if the cameraman has got anything to do with you. Because I, I thought I'm dealing with, you know, professions and I just didn't see that coming. Yeah, but I think at the end of the day, it's all, I don't know how you do your things because I haven't worked with you on the level of uh, talent and, yeah. and, 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 and director or producer. But I'm thinking when I go back to generalizing the whole idea mm -hmm. of uh, treatment, the welfare of the actors, I think it's bad. Because even when you find people that have actually made it in the industry, they have the names, they've made the names, mm -hmm. you'd expect them to treat talent differently. Mm -hmm. You know, because, because I would want, me, my whole point is prepare me. Okay. Like, let me know what I'm going for. Yeah. 
do not make me feel like oh things are supposed to be like this and then now they're like this yeah. so i i think direct maybe when i get to that level I'll, I'll make but i start saying it now so that by the time i get to that level as a producer mm. people will know exactly what to do when mm. because i am thinking talk to someone let them understand what is happening what is your budget because if in the first place you don't want, you cannot afford me as a talent, then it would be good for you to go for someone you can actually afford. Yeah. Because I'm going to give you trouble, you're going to be stressed, and probably I won't even deliver. I won't give you the good work you expected to get. Mm. And then you go like, oh, yanta wanya, namsa sura sente nyingi, nyo na amalidi zanga tampa, dene chinali nsu vila anziti de film. But it's all because you did not prepare them, you did not discuss, did not come down, sit down, talk agree disagree come to an understanding yeah. so that you avoid such mm. wow <laughs> <laughs> but kenisha before we actually go i would like you to again mm. because now you are a woman you are a producer in this a male dominated industry mm. i i because i know how hard it is yeah. i know trust me i know because they like to take advantage of the women mm. and because it has been known that it's their industry. It is a male-dominated industry. You don't know what you're doing. You're not, you're not up to the standard, up to the, you know, what's up there, totally ready. So how would you encourage your fellow filmmaker, a woman now, as a producer, as a writer, as someone who is, who is supposed to be making change in the industry? Um, just get to know why you really came into the industry know what you want yeah yeah i know what i want but i am being suppressed okay. i have these men who think <coughs> it is their thing then just show them that of course you're understanding what they are saying that but when you go back you know to your home alone think why am i really in this industry like he's saying this, prove them wrong they're saying that what am i supposed to do as a person because when I was joining, I didn't ask anyone that, you know what, I'm, I want to join the for, you know, film industry. Should I or shouldn't I? Yes. So I just, okay. They say, oh, you can't do this. Oh, why? Because you're this and that. Then go back to your home alone. Think. Yeah, because I know someone who has been on, on an audition. Mm. And uh, when he got there, or the people that were auditioning just looked at him and they told him Dayo of all he may something like that as in I haven't <coughs> been told you that I'm into farming mm -hmm. why why do you look at me and you 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 know you know you you make me feel that low like like make me hate this thing mm -hmm. so I think <coughs> you as a producer mm. what do you actually how do you do your auditions do you like announce on tv do you like do like uh, paper announcements well, how do uh, you how do people get to know that you're actually my my first project because i was new in the industry i i made an advert on tv i called out actors and actresses but then uh this other project that i'm doing i actually because i'm now in the industry so i know the people who are good so i reached out to them and I was, you know, when I was writing, I was like, this person is fit for this role. So I reached out to them and I was like, hey, um, I'm actually like, I have a project, so project that I'm doing and I think you're really perfect for the role. Tell me how your schedule is. Are you busy? Uh, should I count on you? Yeah. Oh, so that's how you, <coughs> you head counted. Yes. As I, in you hand call people <coughs> and then you're like, I'm going to call Aggie because yes. I think. So you write this story knowing that does this happen after you've written or it happens after? As in, du during when you're writing, do you know like, aha, can work apart this mm. role, I know who actually fits it better. Uh, or does it happen after you've written and now you're there and you're like, okay, I'm going to shoot, I have to start casting, but uh, I think Agi might fit this role. I think, mm. is that how it happens or do you yeah. write with people in mind? Okay. It can really like happen either way, but the first one you see people can really disappoint you. You can write having Aggie in the picture and when you reach, she, she, she might, you know, tell, uh, I'm really busy. I don't think I'll really uh, work do, for yeah. you. Mm. Then you end up getting disappointed. But then when you write and then after you just, you know, see a cast and like 
I need such and such a person with this kind of feature, with this kind of accent, who do I have? I have four guys, this, this and that. So you check them, you like you have your main. And if it says, you know, you have the alternatives. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you do it. Yeah. yeah, because I am also thinking like lately you people that mm -hmm. the writers or the filmmakers, directors and producers, mm -hmm. you have you are looking for brands. So that's the right word. As in people who have already made it. But <coughs> what do you think about people that are just coming? Actually Because I might actually not be up there. Mm. I am somewhere, but I I know. Na yete mumpa de chance kwanga you're looking for faces. Because you guys actually what you do, mm. I think you're looking for you're just going to cast me in your mm. movie because mm. you think I have uh, a good following. Mm. Because you know at the end of the day people want to watch that movie because it has Agi in. Mm. And because Agi Alinachi I not following. I know. I know. I'm following on Instagram. I know. I'm following on Kuchi. So maybe that's what happens. Because but then you're not giving people chances. No, I believe. I believe more in talent, because actually I don't want to behave. You know, like how I was treated. Yes, because I came with talent, and mm. I don't know. Maybe they were looking for what you said, following and whatever. That's why I wasn't like I didn't get that lucky when I started. So I believe more in talent. Like if I'm going to cast someone, I just, you know, take a look at the projects, the previous projects you've worked on. And I'm like, how has this person performed? Yes. Before, okay, the other thing also matters. Yes. What but, other but thing? The, the, the following. following and w <laughs> whatever you're going to add on my project because, you know. What are you bringing uh, on the table? Yes. It also matters a lot. But first, my first priority is I... You know, I want, you know, I prefer talent first. Yeah. Before I look at the other things. Yes. Okay, I get so, to know what um, you can do. I understand now. Mm. So I know when you call me for, <coughs> for work, I'll know what to do yeah. with you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Kenisha, thank you so much for being on the show. But mm. what are your parting shots to the people watching? Uh, okay. For example, you can tell them that filmmaking is real. It's actually real like it's business or mm. business or career <laughs> or whatever but it is your time okay mm, thank you so much Aggie. actually um filmmaking is fun filmmaking is a career uh, filmmaking um, is a business depends how you take it do you want to make it as you know a source of income how are you prepared yes is that all you have to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them, my dear. Oh, Agi. It's okay, it's all right. Thank you so much for watching Movie Manio. It airs every Saturday at 5. You don't want to miss this episode. I bring you the best of the best of the best in the industry. I cannot go without thanking my cameraman, Ken. Thank you so much. My producer, he's in the corner there feeling big my editors somewhere everyone that has helped this show be what it is right now i thank god for everyone i don't take it for granted tune in every saturday at five and watch rest tv watch movie manual guys rest tv is your station it has all different beautiful educating informing entertaining shows i can't mention them all one by one but i will just randomly say for example youth hub the Hitmaster, uh, the, the Gist, Take Off. I don't know, there are so many. But most importantly, we also have the gospel being preached by Pastor Isaac Chovich Wewe. So we have never give up. It keeps you inspired. It keeps you going. It teaches you how to be faithful in God. Because without God, we are finished. We are done. So tune in to Rest TV and watch all these beautiful, entertaining, and informing programs. But my show airs every Saturday at 5. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. I love you and God bless you. Bye.